What's up, everybody? Greg here from Lens Pro to Go, and welcome back to the podcast. In today's episode, we're going to talk to a really good friend of mine, Sam Dobbins, who actually used to work at Lens Pro to Go. He moved down to Miami, and now he's working for Vossen, and he has his own company doing freelance photography and videography in the automotive industry. So in this podcast, we're going to talk about starting out in the automotive industry in photography and video, and we're also going to talk about a recent shoot that we did together for Volkswagen, covering an event and then doing some owner spotlights, which I'm going to have a BTS video for if you guys want to check that out. I think it'll be coming out probably within the next week. If you guys want to download the link to the podcast instead of watching the video form, or if you want to watch the video form, if you're listening on a podcasting app, all the links will be in the show notes so you can check those out. And if you want to learn a little bit more about Sam Dobbins, definitely go and check out all of his links, which will be in the description as well. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode with Sam Dobbins talking about photography and videography in the automotive industry. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave those in the comments below and uh, enjoy this episode. We just finished up a shoot at uh, Volk, Volk, Wolffest. Wolf, Wolfskart. 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 Uh, for Volkswagen, we were doing some owner spotlights and then some event coverage. Yeah. Uh, by the way, this is introduction, I guess. Sam Dobbins, a uh, good friend of mine. We used to work together at Lens Pro. Uh, yeah. He moved down to Miami. Now he's working for Vossen, and he's grown up doing automotive and car photography, and I'll yeah. do a better proper intro. Okay. earlier in this uh, but I mean tell a little bit about yourself a little bit about your background and then we can hop into the questions uh, yeah so my name is Sam Dobbins I've been shooting for 11 or 12 years now I was raised around hot rods and muscle cars and stuff like that and played music when I was a kid and got into photography by way of wanting photos of my band so I learned how to shoot to get the pictures of my band that I wanted and then realized I really liked photo um, I worked freelance for several years, bartended on the side, played that little balance uh, seasonally in Spokane, Washington, where I'm from. Uh, lived in Seattle for a little bit, moved out to West Virginia in 2012 to start More Than More, which is a company that focuses on automotive photography. Um, then moved up to Boston January 2014, worked at Lens Pro for like nine months, and. Boston offered me the job in Miami, and I've been there since uh, September 2014. Awesome. Let's. Uh, I guess let's start at the beginning. So you you got into automotive photography with your band and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> focusing on like the gear. What, where did you start? Did you start with Canon, Nikon, Sony? Yeah, so like how you got into it? I uh, when I was going to university. I was at Eastern Washington University. I got a BA in geography and <laughs> and uh, I took a couple photo classes, like a black and white intro to film course when I was in high school, going to the community college, and then another just a f basic Photoshop course um, when I, was, I think I was 20. And that kind of introduced me to the cameras and how a DSLR works and then I think it would have been around the time I graduated high school when I was 18 I bought a Canon Rebel XT like the most marketed camera that Canon had made at that point they had ads in every magazine for every type of thing like I mean that was like their first like DSLR consumer DSLR that yeah yeah and uh I wish I still had that camera, but I, I went from <laughs> It'd that. It'd be fun to play on. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, shot on that for a while, kit lenses, and then, you know, like the full focal range of gear, like an 1855, a, a nifty 50, 1.8, and then the 55 to 200, I think. Um, and the first, like, big boy lens that I got was a 7200 F4 non-IS. It's super, a great lens. It's super, super sharp. Super sharp, super cheap. I got it used for like 400 bucks. I still have it. I could still sell it for 400 bucks. Mm -hmm. And it was a no-brainer. And nothing's changed. They just came out with a new one. and It's identical. It's identical. Yeah. They changed the body shape a little bit, but yeah. for the most part, yeah, it's like the, the rubber, same lens. The rubber grips are finer. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, did, they added a little bit of like a taper to the barrel too, so yeah. it's a little bit wider. I think it's a 72 millimeter instead of 70. 67. Or, yeah, instead of the 67. Yeah. 
um, or one of those two. But, but yeah, I, I shot on that and went use camera to use camera. Um, the XT I bought new. Um, we got hey, a maybe plane that's my going by. maybe that's my airplane. Is it Ameri- yep, Ameri- yep. Oh, it's American Eagle. That could be one of our one of our planes. <laughs> um, He's about to fly out. We're trying to bust yeah, out we're this, right next to the interview. airport trying to uh, <laughs> wrap this up. But yeah, um, then I got to use 20D, use 30D, use 40D, and then I used 5D1. And I still have all three 5D1s that I acquired over the years. One of them's got about 700,000 clicks on the original shutter. It's bulletproof. Yeah. I wish that was the camera that got ran over last week because it's like the <laughs> Nokia of cameras. But I mean, 7,000 shutter clicks isn't anything for your like 1DX, which you're shooting on now. Oh, no. Sorry. 700,000. Oh, oh, oh. 700,000. That's, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of clicks for any camera. Yeah, like Not there's no any, black like... paint or coating anywhere on yeah. the bottom half of it. It's fucking workhorse. I love that thing. Mm-hmm. So have you have you always stayed through like the Canon range then you've never yeah I mean ventured out to like Sony or Fuji no or actually Nikon I ha- or- until uh, I worked for lens pro I was pretty limited on the gear that I got to use um, I couldn't afford to mm-hmm. get anything crazier than a 5d1 and that was a little while ago too so the 5d1 was a little bit more relevant um, but working at Lens Pro, obviously, I got to use everything. I really love the ergonomic, like the physical ergonomics of uh, the Nikon um, D3, D4, D5 body. Yeah, and the 1D. Like, the yeah, yeah. And they're, I really like the DF2. I don't know what it is about mm-hmm. that camera, but I liked it. It's, I liked uh, it's a it. retro throwback to like the, the film. Yeah, film but it's cameras. like packed with all of the tech that was mm-hmm. available at the time. Um, but for the most part, I've stuck with Canon. I have an A7R2 Sony that I had bought to try and run and gun with because I could do photo and video, but, um, it can't keep up the right time and the buffer time that yeah. when switching photo to video mode is not something I can handle. What's your like position now? Cause you started in photography, but you've, yeah, so in it, the past like year, you've been transitioning pretty hard into video as well. Uh, or I would say it? like you're just sort Three of or four it years now. Um, yeah, when I moved to Florida, Vossen approached me about a like a, a photojournalist role. So I'd travel with them to the different events that they go to and shoot cars and write articles for their website. Mm-hmm. And um, within the first couple months, things moved around at Vossen. I became the creative director and just through traveling with a videographer and learning about the gear at lens pro that was kind of available on the market at the time i just started taking the the photography like the the look and composition skills and and applying that to video and now four years late i'm it's almost four years that i've been at vossen um i do 99% 99% of the travel photo and video. I was in Japan last week for an owner's meet and shot a video for that event, shot four other four other cars. Okay, maybe that's our plane. <laughs> Envoy? No, Delta. that was a Delta. Delta yeah. plane. Um, but yeah, now it's, uh, I would say it's a pretty solid 50-50 split. I've been doing a lot of freelance work for Volkswagen for the last few years. I built a car. I've done a few cars now, but uh, my GTI was a project that was built in conjunction with Volkswagen, and that helps open up the door to start doing more work, and um, now I'm doing a lot of photo and video work for them. Um, some things that are strictly photo, some are strictly video. I'm getting to work with a lot bigger productions, um, like with third story films, I've done a few different things now, both motorsports oriented and new product mm-hmm. and yeah pretty much just all around at this point how's that like starting out because i mean a lot of people who are just getting into automotive photography like working with huge brands is sort of what they aspire to and what they want to do like yeah how do you build that relationship and how do you so get into the community and it like, was very organic in the way that it came about i had been an enthusiast first 
and I kind of developed my interest in Volkswagens. Um, like I grew up around hot rods. I'm still super into that culture, and um, that's where the car thing started for me. But I got into Volkswagens as I was getting into photography, mm-hmm. and I met a lot of people through online forums, started shooting for um, Performance Volkswagen magazine, which is based in the U.K., um, started shooting for them in 2009 and just did a ton of a ton of editorial work for them um, between myself and a couple other people we handled all of the stateside shoots that they did and just being involved in the Volkswagen European car community made it very easy to keep building my name and make it recognizable to people at the brand yeah and um then getting a job working in the industry for Voss and Wheels, um, it made perfect sense to to keep going. And you know, we, my relationship with VW existed before Vossen, but because of the enthusiast side and like yeah, going to shows, and shows you shot it and like that's we, we traveled up and down the East Coast to like twenty events a year. And you just start to see the same people over and over and you develop those mm-hmm. relationships. And that was all we did. There was no time for vacation. We were on the road every weekend going to a different show, popping up a booth and selling t-shirts and- As uh, more cal- than more? As more than yeah. more. Uh, calendars, I've done a Volkswagen specific calendar, all modified cars for nine years. Um, I started that in 2009, so this will be the 10th year. They're sick calendars. <laughs> I'll put a link in the, uh, the description. Check them out. They're sweet. Yeah, I just got to figure out how many cars I can find <laughs> this year because I've been so busy doing other stuff. Um, but yeah, then, you know, like that relationship with Volkswagen opened the door to Vossen working with Volkswagen too. And we ended up putting wheels on a couple of their enthusiast builds. And then I built my GTI with Volkswagen kind of in the back pocket I knew that they were going to use my car for the following season Mm -hmm. and I ended up shooting it for them because it's my car and I'm an automotive photographer anyway and that led to me like it was just such a an easy thing I'm already at the shows I know everybody I know the the scene and how it's evolved and everything about the different generations of cars and it it's just too too easy because I have built my entire career shooting their cars, so it makes yeah it makes sense makes it a very easy transition. That said, I don't think a lot of other people could like get their foot in the door that easily because. But I mean, it wasn't really easy. Like you've been doing yeah, like na- stuff nowadays and you were an though, like, I feel like things happen at such a faster rate. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot larger field now. Sure. So, There's a lot more demand for all yeah, types of, of content from like the TV commercials. Like we were yep. talking about this last night, like there's the social side of it. And like, there's just budget ranges from $200 projects where they just want you to go and take like one photo at an event or something like that to yep. hundreds of thousands, the millions of dollars for, yeah. for some of like the bigger stuff. So there's like a full range that you yep. can start out with that smaller stuff and build your portfolio in like the style that you like and definitely go with a brand that you're, passionate Already about passionate too about, yeah because like you were the enthusiast first and then you started oh yeah photography is fun let's build this yeah. in and like tie those two things together and then build mm-hmm. it up and you've been doing it for what like 11 years well, yeah you've been in like the years. volkswagen scene at least 15 years yeah a long time <laughs> yeah since i was like 15 or 16 that was when the interest in the volkswagen community began and i started picking up magazines and mm-hmm. playing around on VW Vortex, which is the main online forum. So, yeah, it, you know, it's easy f- since I was always going to shows and always shooting cars and always posting them online and like religiously keywording things on Flickr and stuff like that. Um, you know, if somebody at Volkswagen searched H2O International photo, they're gonna, the whole Google image page is gonna be my work because. I've been at every H2O for nine or 10 years yeah. and you know, it's all my work they're going to find. What, what do you think about like the process of building that social media online? Cause 
back when you started, there really wasn't that. Like it was the, no, com- the it, local I community. Res- it I wasn't. resisted Instagram so hard. Yeah. It was all forums. Like Flickr was mm-hmm. the way you were able to host all of your work there. Google would find it, and then you would also you'd host it to post on forums. Right. Um, I would say Flickr was like one, Flickr and the forums, and then Facebook too were the most important like social components to my growth. Cause you've also built like, this is another actually really good like thing that you've done to sort of help build your name as you started your cars and cameras sort right. of brand off of more than more, uh, building the online Facebook community and like using that to leverage your name and your brand. Um, and also build a place where people can come to help and like give criticisms and like, expand on like their own knowledge and get critique Mm -hmm. and feedback and get their name in in sort of the community and like how important has that been to your success as doing automotive photography in the industry and getting paid to do it how important has like building that community on your own like that outside of just going to events um i think that just makes makes me more approachable like you you walked around the show with me the last couple days and i've built relationships with tons of people i might not remember their names or whatever but um always answering questions when we would have a booth that shows half of what we did at the booth is talk to people about how to shoot so Mm -hmm. it was kind of uh maybe not the best business model (laughs) because there is no way to generate revenue if we're just helping people out and they aren't necessarily buying our products but um, it definitely helped build the community and but it th- and even too. long before that there there was an online community called Snap Riot and uh, some old friends Mike Kippen, Sean Walsh, Randy Williams, um, guys that were also in the Volkswagen scene as photographers. They had worked for Performance VW as well. That was an online photo community specific to car photography mm-hmm. and. Uh, that kind of fizzled away 2010 2009 maybe and it kind of just we went a couple years without having that community existing and it just made sense since we were already going to all of these events that anna and i my old business partner at more than more would start that community again because we were doing it face to face and in person at shows already so why not bring it online that way everybody can keep it and make it more international instead of just so exactly. localized to the things that you guys were going to yeah exactly let's talk about um people just getting into yes the business and the industry and like how has it changed now from when you started and like what do you man it's like a night and in... sorry to cut you off but no i already know where we're going <laughs> um it's it really is a night and day difference and that's something i would say when we were going around having a booth at different shows, that was a question that we got asked the most. There, I'm done, by, I'm done by fiddling. By new um, Yeah, by people or... wanting to get into things. Now I'm done. <laughs> 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 no, but, you know, it's a common question because people see us, like, you know, living the dream. We're out shooting cars and going to car shows every weekend. And uh, we ans- the way that... I've answered that has evolved with the evolution of how it all works because back then I every every car that I found to shoot which was all spec stuff Mm -hmm. was through forums through VW Vortex the only Volkswagen forum and you know you'd build relationships you'd see people posting about the car that they're building and then say hey like next time I'm in your town I would love to shoot that and I just shot a bunch of stuff for free to cut my teeth for a few years and once I started doing work with the magazine then I could even approach people and be like hey I think this car could be a really great candidate for the magazine I'd love to shoot it and sometimes I would get pre-approval sometimes I would just shoot it and send it in hope they take it Mm -hmm. if not maybe farm it to a couple other couple other titles and uh, that, that was it back then and now as as social media social media being Facebook and Instagram, or I guess we could go by stages because Facebook came along and it just so happened that Facebook groups 
became like Facebook launched the group function mm-hmm. around the same time that VW Vortex had like a catastrophic meltdown and the website was down for a couple weeks and then it came back and it wasn't the same as before and at that point everybody just stopped using it and once they, they fixed it the nobody came back over to facebook yeah and it you know it sucks because i had relationships with the guys that ran vw vortex at that point too but uh man i was just talking so fast i'm out of breath <laughs> no <laughs> it's but, all the hustling around you're yeah yeah around you're... um but then with faith, Facebook, <laughs> Facebook, uh, it completely changed because you were, instead of hiding behind a screen name or having to figure out who somebody was, you looked at their actual profile. You could see them. You People would show them. the progress of their build on their profile. You'd have a direct way to contact them. And then you also knew where everybody lived, which you kind of did on the forums as well. But that gave the people looking for photo shoots whether it was a an individual car owner or a magazine or a shop or you know aftermarket manufacturer that gave them like a new marketplace to find photographers Mm -hmm. and from an editorial magazine standpoint it it created a new marketplace to find cars to feature so i took i i've gotten so busy with my work at Vossen and some of the stuff I'm doing with Volkswagen that I don't really contribute to the magazine as much anymore but for a long time like I felt like part of my role with the magazine was also to find the cars because the more you find and the higher quality they are if I find it I get to shoot it so you know if you at the time if you're hungry and you were out finding the cars and doing the legwork of of watching the forums and Facebook and stuff, it was easy Mm -hmm. because you're just already paying attention. And if you're passionate about the subject matter, you want to pay attention even if it's not not to try and find shoots. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, like it's just fun to see what people are You're just doing it because you love it. Yep, and then, you know, people over the years, I've seen some friends, I've shot like some friends up not far from here in uh, Quebec City unix performance i've shot like 10 of their cars over the years and now all of their friends i shoot all of their cars and i've done almost every one of their magazine features which is pretty cool because that relationship like i only see them a couple times a year but i get to shoot everything that they make and now they all have you know huge catalogs of my photos that they've that i've shot for uh, magazines and now and going back to Facebook that's uh, I think that's when things really began to shift and with the introduction of Instagram it seemed gimmicky at first and that's kind of why I hated it and resisted so hard and then it's evolved in like it's it's evolved into such a business oriented visual thing like it is a portfolio for a lot of businesses looking for photos or photographers it is the portal or the that is your website that is your presence like you don't even need a website anymore Mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't even upload to Flickr or photo bucket or whatever yeah and now agencies are only shooting content for instagram or only shooting for stories and IGTV mm-hmm. and stuff like that now. Oh, vertical so, video. We can, yeah. We can all think about yeah, like vertical they're already video. making rigs to invert or to, you know, flip a camera just for that. Yeah. Um, but with that, the internet fame thing has become so seemingly attainable. And in the car scene, it's become a contest to... Uh, not a contest like there's still very a lot of true enthusiasts but being the next person to get a hundred thousand followers or whatever is like becoming the more important thing than the cars themselves yeah um for content creators it's great because you can go to a show and if you do the work to figure out who owns what you can tag them and then if they have a lot of followers and they might repost your photo and tag you as the photographer or if they like your stuff, they can get in contact and, and hire you to and do a shoot. You, yeah. um, 
or just go out and even if they're not paying you you can still go out and like do a feature on that car instead exactly. of just grabbing it at a show where it's parked with yep. a bunch of other cars and and, f- and for uh, magazine editors it's made it much much easier too because there's like a, a full-on paper trail to whose car is whose mm-hmm. and there's a million pages out there reposting the same photos so there are some days especially with Boston when we have 1.6 million followers so our when we post something it scatters everywhere and it's, it's really, like wildfire just yeah it really picks is up, one person picks it up and it, it's here, the and same with like ones. stupid memes and stuff oh the, yeah the, the, memes the trickle are, is crazy memes are because that like that, that is wildfire is so shareable mm-hmm. that yeah like kirby who we met or two nights up. ago yeah like yeah, you make kirby jenner <laughs> kirby jenner check him out yeah he's awesome. got a funny instagram he does he like takes himself and puts him in photos with kylie jenner yeah um and pretends to be his her long lost brother yeah uh it's some really really well done photoshop Yo. and like video work it's incredibly it is top impressive. notch the, the video stuff is the most mind-blowing because yeah the lighting like yeah. the keying he does everything it's, is just on point and it's like if you didn't know it was like messed with you wouldn't yeah you would think it was real yep um which is pretty crazy yeah but so getting back to social media and getting your name out there um as an individual, that's a huge, op- like the opportunity is there. As a business or as the client looking for photographers, um, which could be a magazine editor, an individual owner that wants photos of their car, or in my case at Boston, we're always looking for photographers in different regions so we don't have to travel to shoot a car that we, you know, want to have in a catalog or on our website. Yeah. Um, and it's, it just makes it easy to f- to browse photographers and mm-hmm. easy to see their work and if they have you know a well curated instagram profile then that's basically a portfolio now you don't need to have a website you yeah. don't need to have but a physical portfolio or anything like that like your instagram in some cases can get more across than anything else the downside to that though is like it's so accessible like building a website and building a professional looking website like you had to put a lot of hard work and dedication mm-hmm. to it not saying that you don't have to do that with your instagram and like yeah. really building out a theme and a look and style of your own but it's so much more attainable and so many more people on the platform doing that mm-hmm. that it can be hard to break through in your own style to Absolutely. get recognized by Vossen or yep. volkswagen or somebody and to reach out yeah and i do i especially looking for freelancers with Vossen, um, I do, I'm, I'm very wary still because you could have, you know, like you could have a really polished Instagram and it's just, it's just like a portfolio, but, um, it's very easy to oversell yourself with Instagram, with such a small sample of work, mm-hmm. uh, maybe after because you only put the best of the best. Like you're not of putting. Of course, everybody's your, life looks amazing on social media, right? Yeah, because you're just you're narrowing it yeah. down. Like this is my best stuff, which exactly. of course makes you look great. Which but is how shot, a portfolio should work, right? But as a client, I also want to. F- I, I don't want to see that you've gotten really lucky on twelve cars, or twelve photos that are in your portfolio. I want to see that you can recreate that if I'm paying you to do so. Yeah. Like I, I want to know that there was never luck in this situation. And if I mm-hmm. hire you, you're going to be able to figure out how to make it all work. Yeah. Um, you need to have the location down. You need to have your light. lighting down, mm-hmm. just the time of everything. Yeah. A- a- every, your editing skills, which is so important now, like mm-hmm. every, you can't post photos that aren't edited Works. now. Yeah. Um, especially just to build your own style because exactly. you need to do your, color work you need to do everything to tweak it and make it your own so that it's not just yeah. like oh i'm at a car show here's a photo here's a photo mm-hmm. uh you gotta like really put in the effort yeah and you gotta it shoot out. it well mm-hmm. to start with which is also a, a highly debated topic in the What's, what in, looks the, good? in the car <laughs> photography groups on facebook no like the there's always conversation about whether it's more important to be a good shooter or a good shopper. And 
in my opinion, if you can't take a nicely, comp if you can't compose a photo and you don't have a solid understanding of composition in the first place, it doesn't matter how great you are at Photoshop, if the perspective of the car and the distortion or whatever is off, mm -hmm. no amount of Photoshop's gonna make that better. Like I, I unless you're completely re-CGing it, and like <laughs> right, and that's a completely different level of work. Yeah, um, yeah, I think that covers social media though. Yeah, and like I mean, building a name for yourself. It definitely does. Um, and and above above all, if you have, how do I say it? Don't be afraid to put in the work to make your work stand out because somebody will notice it, and the and people that one, the people that will right notice person. it will appreciate it as well. Mm -hmm. um, there, n nothing good can like. There's nothing positive that can happen to your skill set or ego if everybody just says "cool photo, bro." Like, learn how to take criticism and make yeah. your stuff better you're not getting trash talked people aren't condescending or they're not breaking you down you can't build it back up yeah exactly it's that's the hard part you can't critique anybody these days because the skin's too soft because everybody just says cool oh, yeah. photo fire emoji yeah lit bam <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's an interesting but a, as a client you know being in a position where I'm hiring people, I can, and I know that my, my clients as a photographer, we can tell when you put in the work and mm. whether you know how to do it or not and if you can recreate it or not. And all it takes is one conversation sometimes. So just put in the work, learn how to do it and learn how to do it thoroughly. What are some like beginner advice for people who have a basic understanding of photography or video because you're doing yeah. both that will like take their normal standard looking footage to the next level is it shooting in like different frame rates is it shooting in different like shutter speeds which i know we did with like some of the rolling Just, stuff yeah i think is there like technical things or is there a creative side of it that helps at least you and your process when you're doing videography or photo for cars I think that you just need to practice and trial and error I mean you can go to film school and stuff too I've not done that I'm self-taught from that intro to black and white film class 13 years ago <laughs> um, but I don't think there's a better way of learning than by making mistakes firsthand because now you know how to avoid them and the biggest component to learning photography, in my opinion, is making mistakes. And that teaches you what to avoid and how to approach yeah. the next shoot. And yeah, that, that would be my biggest word of advice to somebody starting new, just keep shooting. Keep shooting, keep exposing yourself to different lighting scenarios, different backgrounds and types of features, whether it's mountains or trees or sharp buildings that are like new and modern, old buildings that are industrial and brick and stuff like that, like learn textures and how they complement, you know, certain colors of cars and yeah, what's wonder, busy in the background and what's busy in the foreground and vice versa. So that's definitely something that like we could probably, I don't know if we have time to go into it now, um, but like understanding how cars work in their environments and how that tells a story. Like it's not exactly. just about taking the photo. Yeah. It's about using where like where the person who owns that car, like tell a story with what you're trying yeah. to develop instead of just like, oh, there's a sweet car on the street. Like take it to the person's house or take it to mm -hmm. a place where they live. Like if they're in Las Vegas, go out into the desert. Like really show that yeah. environment that the car and the owner and that story is. Yeah, especially if you can and for stills, if you can incorporate the owner into a photo, that's always awesome. And I've always, whenever I'm on a shoot and I'm having the owner reposition the car, I'll always fire off frames of them getting in and out and cleaning it or whatever, because those candid little shots are sometimes the winners. And, mm -hmm. you know, it also shows that you're able to 
incorporate people and cars together, which you can't have cars without people. Right. I mean, we're, I guess we're about to have autonomous cars, but... That's true. <laughs> but there'll still be people inside those cars yeah. while they're driving around. Except for that race car that, that was at Goodwood. It was an unmanned race car that, yeah, I'll, huh. I'll send it to you. Yeah, I, I saw it at the Festival out. of Speed a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, just keep shooting. Like, you know, a rolling shot is a perfect example, whether it's uh, still or video. If it doesn't look like it's going fast enough, adjust your shutter speed. If it's too bright, too dark, whatever, lock in that shutter speed, set up shutter priority, and make up for it elsewhere. Do you have some, like, specific things? Because I know there's a couple things when I shot with you and you were working at Lens Pro, like we were just sort of like talking about it. And when I was just kind of getting into like car photography a little bit, I don't do it professionally or anything, yeah. but I mean, I guess I kind of do cause we did the shoot, but <laughs> um, like little things when you're shooting cars, like one of the ones that stuck out to me was when you shoot trucks, you want to shoot them uphill. And when you shoot cars, you want to have them going downhill. Like that yes. big thing just for like angles and composition. Like, yeah. Are there any other things? It like all depends that? on the car. You know, like newer cars tend to have smoother lines. Cars from the 80s have very boxy lines. So you don't want to use a super wide angle lens on a car that's got a bunch of straight lines because now the lines are going to be bent. Right. Um, and even correcting that, like you might correct the line to be straight, but now the wheel looks like a football and things like that. So those are all really important factors um, compositionally, but... We are almost out of time, yeah. so I think we might have to pick this one up later. We yeah. could talk about composition all day long. Yeah, we should definitely with cars. do a second uh, episode of this. Yeah. Um, where can people find you? What's your Instagram website? Okay, all so that stuff? Uh, morethanmore.com, M-O-R-E-T-H-A-N-M-O-R-E.com, and on Instagram, S. Dobbins Photo, and that's S-D-O-B-B-I-N-S underscore photo. Um, or s dobbins underscore vossen or s dobbins.com awesome, i am yeah. sam dobbins.com all I of this, all these domains for some reason <laughs> all of this will be in the description of the show notes for the podcast and also in the description of the youtube video. youtube video uh, if you're watching this on youtube yep um if you guys enjoy these podcasts definitely hit that subscribe button like this video if you have any questions about automotive photography feel free to check out his facebook channel where you can do some critiques and cnc and ask yeah. questions to people yeah absolutely um, or any comments in the description below and i can get back to you and get you in touch with the right people so hope you guys enjoyed this one and we will catch you in the next podcast awesome thanks greg thanks for coming all right so that's going to wrap it up for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, make sure to leave those in the comments. If you want to check out all of Sam's social media, they'll all be in the description below. And if you want to check out any of the gear that he talks about and the stuff that he uses for his work, that will also be listed in the description below. If you want to see more of these podcasts, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one.